Yes. Your question. Uh, since Iwo Jima was so well fortified, did you ever see a Japanese soldier? Okay, the question is the, the island was so well fortified, did you ever see a Japanese soldier? William? I saw a couple the uh, third morning. One of them shot through the top of my helmet. He was kind of belligerent. <laughs> 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 And he, he shot the, the rear sights off a guy laying right beside me and killed him and four men on a, on a light machine gun. So we, uh, that's about the, the extent of my viewing them. And, and they, uh, I decided I didn't want to see them too much if I could avoid it. <laughs> Can anybody else want to respond to that? Did you see any Japanese? They were very well fortified. Colonel? I saw a lot of dead ones. <laughs> I uh, I think the number of live Japanese I saw I could count on one hand. The only one that I could possibly count, I saw his eyes with the lid of a spider trap, like a 55 gallon drum with a lid on it, and rolled a grenade out towards me. As I say, all they could see was his eyes. Uh, fortunately, there was a rock formation beside me that I jumped behind and got none of the effect of the grenade. Uh, I carried an M1 rifle with eight rounds in each clip. I had, uh, had it loaded with ball ammunition, uh, armor piercing, and tracer. So I pumped, uh, pumped about eight rounds into that uh, trash can. I'm sure I got it. Robert one um, the question was, did you ever uh, see any of the enemy? Let me ask you this, does a 10 pound bag of flour make a big biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, we've seen lots of them. But there's one little incident that sticks in my mind. After we had left uh, Sarabachi going back in the other direction, there was this gap that was up in a tree. And it was up against a blub so you, you couldn't hardly see him to take him up there. I don't know how many of our people he might have injured or killed before he was ever detected. But some of our group noticed him up there, and he wasn't up there very long after that. Thank you. Another question over here? Hi, my name's Rebecca Robeson. Chick Robeson is my uncle, actually, so thank you for those kind words. Um, we wanted to ask if you had seen any action previously, or was Iwo Jima your first battlefield experience? So the question is, was Iwo Jima your first battle, or did you see some prior experience on the other islands? Wayne? Iwo Jima was my first battle, and uh, I didn't know just what to expect, and it, 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 it fulfilled all my, my interests. <laughs> John, did you have any other battle experience prior to Iwo Jima? Any other battle experience prior to Iwo Jima? John didn't have any. Colonel? I was in a parachute battalion, landed on Bougainville Island on uh, December of uh, 43. Uh, about a month after the 3rd Division landed there, but they pushed us out beyond the perimeter to occupy what they called Hill 1000, trying to get there before the Japanese got there. We had a ridge in front of the hill, a couple of hundred feet below us, and uh, the division wanted to know whether the Japanese had gotten there or not. We hadn't gotten any fire from them, so they sent me down my platoon, down around behind the, uh, the ridge, see if there were any Japanese, and we found they were, they ambushed us. Uh, it was like the actually like training because we trained against all types of ambushes. Uh, we shot the hell out of them. They got one man in the first, first round they fired, uh, killed our getaway man. Nobody else was wounded and we counted 16 of them and we had uh, a number of others that were in a swamp marsh grass that we couldn't see. We had two machine guns firing on them so I'm sure we got a few more. Your training paid off. Ralph, did you have any prior experience before Iwo Jima? 
Ralph, what was his first combat? How was you, Robert? Uh, I wasn't actually in combat. I was overseas two different times. And I was on the Rock Canal after it was settled. Went for a little hike out through the jungle by myself on the weekend. And then foxholes out there where the battle was held still had bones in it. And then I went up on Bougainville. They put us on a little line up on Bougainville, the defense line, where all they were doing was trying to uh, starve what gap might be up in the hills out because the battle was already over. But uh, as far as actual fighting is concerned, that was my only experience, and I don't have anything to compare it with. But they say it was about as bad as it had been any battle of the Marines ever had. Melvin, did you have any other, were you any other battles prior to Iwo Jima? Yes. Okay, Melvin was not. Thank you. The question is that today we don't have very many banana eaters that want to make weight to get in the service. And you just don't hear about that. Tell us a little bit about the atmosphere of America in the 40s as compared to now. What's missing now and how do we get it back? Yeah. Thank you. The question was, back in 1940, we had the atmosphere of people wanting to go into the service to defend their country, and they wouldn't be bananas today to try to get in. So what's happened from then to the day that we don't have as many trying to go into the service? I believe that's your question. Understand the question, William? William? I think in the 40s, when World War II was starting, Everybody was was annoyed with the Japanese for bombing our Pearl, our, uh, Pearl Harbor, and, and uh, everyone was behind the war effort. I think now we're, we're, we've divided it into so many different segments that it's, it's almost you know. First place, I'm, I'm not real strong about our government right now, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think that it, it, uh, we need a little more strength at the end to, to uh, uh, this is a great country that, that we uh, live in and it has been and should be again. Thank you.